So if skateboarding was a language, I think the backside 50-50 would be kind of like a comma. It links everything together. It allows you to maintain your speed really nicely and runs. Some people like doing the street version. This week on Work for Avocados, I'm teaching you the mini ramp version. Be sure to like and subscribe. If we were to compare this to maneuver out in the water, this is incredibly similar to a floater. This is where the face of the wave has curled up enough and has a dense enough lip where a surfer can actually ride to the top of it and grind it like coping. There are a few things that make doing this on a surf skate a little bit different, but the same procedures apply no matter what kind of board that you're on. Typically, as a beginner surf skater, you're gonna have bigger wheels, which are really good for going over rough terrain and cracks and minimalizing vibrations underneath the bus. But one of the secrets about this trick is that you want to feel the coping underneath of you because that's gonna be able to tell you how far you can go, when you're locked in, everything like that. Personally, I think 65 millimeters is a great place to start, but once you learn how to do this, you can do it on any kind of wheels. So when I first wanted to learn these, I was pretty intimidated because it just seems like there's a high risk factor to it, but honestly, it's pretty easy. Start getting comfortable just riding around at a moderate speed and being able to do small little kick turns. Find a long straight crack that you can practice coming onto at a 45 degree angle, and you're gonna practice popping off of it at a 90 degree angle. And you really wanna start feeling comfortable and having control in doing this. From there, practice shifting your weight back because it's gonna ease up on the grind and enable you to go faster and further. You can even find a bank so you can start getting that feeling of elevation change. When you're ready to move on to coping and you feel comfortable with that, you wanna be able to do basic backside kick turns. You wanna get these fluid enough where you can consistently feel the coping underneath the back part of your truck as you go up. You wanna be able to come up, just do a little kick turn and come back down. That's not the trick, but that control in your back truck is key to being able to start coming up on top of the coping you're most likely gonna end up in something like this. This is a backside feeble stall. This is really easy to fix. You just practice getting yourself a little bit more parallel. The good thing about this, as you can see, if you fall backwards, you're on a flat surface. You're gonna slide out, you're probably gonna run out a little bit, but there's really not much danger to be had. Another thing that's really gonna help you on this trick is being able to drop in because it's gonna combine just that um, confidence and going back into the ramp with what we're trying to do. You also don't have to learn the trick in the exact sequential order. Sometimes for me, it helps to learn the second part. And this trick specifically, I remember starting off by putting the board on top of the coping. I knew that I could drop in from that. So going into the first half, once I mastered the second half, gave me more confidence to really go for it because I knew I had it from there. To start the grind, you're gonna wanna float into the stall with a bit of speed. Build your kick turn grinds into drawn out slash grinds and really focus on maintaining that fluid arch and carving motion. From there, the biggest difference is the top third of the transition. You approach it almost exactly the same but once you approach that top third, you wanna come at it a lot sharper and go straight up, but still visualize the end where you're gonna maintain somewhat of a wave shape. The more fluid you make this, the easier and faster you'll go. The most common and biggest issue you're gonna be faced with is locking in, especially with surf skates. On a surf skate, it's really easy to get that front truck on the coping but a lot of times that back truck just hasn't caught up yet. Just double check before dropping in because the last thing you want is to clip. Especially in corners, you wanna make sure that your weight is more inside of the ramp than fully on top of the deck. 
keeping your weight inside of the ramp is gonna minimize a lot of the vibration you get from just coming at it and slapping down as hard as you can on a grind. All right, so what makes these corners different when you're doing a 50-50 is that you have two approaches that you can go about this. If you start earlier, you're gonna have to trace the whole shape of this thing. Seems like it would be easier though, cause you're coming at a straight approach. So you have time to settle in. But what's actually easier in my opinion, and what's gonna get you through this curve a lot easier is you're gonna trace the literal pocket. You see this seam and you see this seam. This is gonna be like the pocket of the wave. This is where all of our energy is gonna come into. If we come in through here and come out through there, that's way less effort and it's way more fluid and it works way better than trying to be like, it's awesome if that's what you're going for. But if you're just trying to learn how to do the trick, start with this. I'm not a professional or coach by any means. I'm just a guy stoked on the small stuff, pretending that he's out in the water on his surfboard. If you guys have any questions though, please leave me a comment and I will do my best to answer them. I've got a long way to go on my own personal journey and I hope one day I'm just as 20% as good as Jimmy here who's just slaughtering the wave. Major shout out to him and shout out to Josh Tracy Surfing for sharing these clips with us because this is definitely at least what I'm aspiring to try to do out in the water one day. I am a super average board rider based out of North Florida where conditions are often less than where we'd like them to be. But that never stops us from trying to make the most of what's around us and being stoked on the smaller things. If any of that resonates with you, maybe consider pressing that like and subscribe button and you'll get notified anytime a new video drops. If you guys have any questions below, be sure to leave a comment and I will see you next week. Thank you so much. We have reached 4,000 subscribers, by the way. Love you guys being a part of this community. Thank you, Kayla, for filming in the rain. She is shaking behind the camera right now. And we're going to go get some coffee. Right? Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really do hope it was helpful to you. And thank you all so much. It's absolutely mind-blowing. What an adventure it's been. Here you can see a progression of the original Work for Avocados logo to what it is now. Thank you to Kayla for always supporting me in filming. Thank you to the community and 5,000s coming up quick. So leave a comment below what you'd like the next tutorial video to be. And I'm really working to make these come out a little bit quicker. Uh, they do take a lot of work though. So, but uh, thank you guys. Have a good day.